I'm Carrie Twig. I am um, an arts and community worker. I have worked in arts and community for um, really my entire career, but like over 17 years. My first job actually started out at PTE, where I was helping out with the school. Um, from there, I moved on to um, running all of the children's um, art appreciation courses at the Winnipeg Art Gallery, um, ran a little bit of um, community development work in my community doing sustainability work, and then worked uh, running um, community programs that are at City. So really, um, when I first got interested in working in the arts, I always thought it was going to be about um, you know, working in the big places like the theaters and the museums. And um, it was through an experience that I had actually at Gilbert Park where I saw the change that actually doing um, artistic programs within the community with the community had the the I that could um, just had the possibility to really make a change in, in people's life and from there got really interested in um, having an artistic practice that took place in a community setting. So I teach um, three courses using kind of all this information that I have coming from the background of community development but also knowing how like arts institutions and educational institutions work. Um, in terms of education, I have um, a BA in Theatre and Film from the University of Winnipeg with an emphasis on um, drama and education. So that's not how to be a drama teacher, but how do you use drama to teach people about other things that are going on in the world. I have a Master's in Education in Humane Education, which is how to teach people about human rights, um, environmental issues, um, animal protection um, and culture kind of all in one and my thesis was using drama to teach um, and explore all of those ideas. I also have a certificate in human resources um, because I think it's really important to understand what motivates people and how to manage people and so all of those kind of that education and background um, bring me to to teach this work. So today what I would like to talk about is um, it's a little bit of a from the first course um, in managing a, a arts project in the community. And it's really the question of what qualities does an artistic leader have in a community collaborative arts practice? So the four features, um, when I looked at what people were doing, what, what people who were having success in these collaborations, what they had, the four features that I saw is that they were artists. Um, the second one was that they could balance compassion and passion that they had a little bit of knowledge about community development and that they had some organization or administrative skills. So I'm gonna go into um, those those in just a second. But first I'll say why, you know, why, what's the difference? Well, the difference between working in a community setting as an artistic leader or working in, um, you know, like a regular arts institution like a museum or a gallery or a theater is really about the status of the artist. So in a theater or if you're at like the, the like an art gallery, the person who organizes the show, the director, the artist, their names are kind of printed everywhere and they're celebrated and the artist is as important kind of as the art and that's who the star is. In community art practices, it's very rare for the artist to even be mentioned. The artist is working alongside the community members the entire time and so you don't, there's no difference between who is, um, who the artist is and who the community members are because they're all kind of one and the same. And um, so that would be the biggest difference in there. And sometimes, you know, you have some artists who really want to do community work and they go, oh, I, I want to share this with the community. But um, these collaborations, it's not about an artist going in and then teaching a community how to do a style of painting or how to do a mural and where they're doing all the work. The, the community actually in this model is adding to the process and has lots to share. And the community is just as much an expert as the artist who's working with them. So the four, the, I guess the first one would be um, that the community leader the commu needs to be an artist. And I would say a practicing artist. That means somebody who's regularly making art, that they're connected to the community. They could be self-taught or they could have a master's degree. It doesn't really matter, you know, how they learned their craft, but that they are um, seen as an artist, they're a practicing artist, and that the rest of the community would also agree that that person was an artist. 
The reason for that is because, you know, if you know a little bit about painting and you want to run a painting program in a community center, you can only teach as much as you know. So if you only know the begin, like the beginning and you find somebody there who actually is an artist, um, you're only going to take them so, so far. So you want to be able to bring all these other resources and experiences um, into the practice and the collaboration. It's also you, you respect the project by being an artist. Um, the second really important thing would be to have that balance between compassion and passion. What I mean by that is compassion is about meeting the community members where they are. It's about listening. It's adapting the program, um, you know, to meet the participants' needs. An example I have is I was um, working a community arts program in this community and on that day we were going to paint um, giant monsters on uh, cardboard paper and then these monsters were going to kind of put throughout this housing complex in which they lived um, and then they could see them out their windows. And when I arrived this little girl came and she said, you know, Carrie, we can't, um, I can't work with you today, I can't paint with you because my brother's missing. And this other girl said, and she's my best friend and her brother's missing and so I can't make art either. Um, and then the mom was walking around and the police were there and she said, yeah, they're not going, like my son's missing. And they were kind of searching the whole um, housing complex. It was multiple, um, multiple buildings where this community was. And so I looked at my art supplies and I said, well, what was he wearing? And they said he was wearing blue jeans um, and an orange and white striped shirt. And I said, well, let's make missing boy posters. And so all these kids and all these adults, and it was the first time adults came, started to make these paintings of this missing boy. And we put like his name and how tall he was and the mom's cell phone number. Um, and then we put them around the community. I got into this van that I had at the time and put them along, um, you know, some of the major routes. And then luckily, like towards the end of that, um, the boy just walked out of the building and he was found. And he came out and he saw all of this um, missing art posters um, and he was just, he was touched that they were looking and everyone came together for him. And then the mother came up to me and she said, thank you for that experience because it gave her something proactive to do while, um, while they were searching in, in this moment of tragedy. And so I think it's a, that is a really great story that illustrates compassion because that's what these projects are about, that you really need to meet the community where they're at. And so if there's a missing boy, that trumps anything that's going to happen. Um, and then balancing that with passion. And so that means passion for the project. So it's not about throwing away the art supplies because there's tragedy, but believing in the project and the purpose of, um, of doing art enough that, that you could keep using it. It's also about showing up on time, being prepared. Um, you know, so if you only have two participants, not canceling the program right away, that believing in it enough to come and, and just following through the entire time for the project. Um, so that was, that's the first two. The third one would be just having a basic knowledge about community development. And, um, you know, so that I think the bits in community development models that are really important for artists and community collaborations would be um, understanding the process about giving the community hope that it's through the process, that there's a hope of kind of making the community um, either improving it or strengthening it, um, that it's a participatory experience so it's not about one person talking and everyone listening and doing it's about everyone participating and adding